Hey young guys and welcome to this episode of the Resto Shed. In this episode we're going to be doing a little bit of love making to the panels on this HQ Holden sedan. We're going to be going through the panel to panel fitment, door gaps um, and you know just getting everything to fit really nice and yeah we're going to be going over the whole car getting it onto the stages pre epoxy and filler work. So yeah hope you guys enjoy the episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for future updates on this build as well as the other ones and uh, yeah We'll see you around. Cheers. So starting the repairs on this side of the car, I'm adjusting the door from the hinges. After that, I'm gonna bring up the front corner of the door with the slide hammer, just so I can get my panel to panel fitment good. After that, I'm breaking out the shrinking disc because I'd gotten a little bit of a high spot just through the door as I'd brought up that corner. Pretty common stuff for uh, these sort of repairs. After that, I'm getting the 80 grit on the DA, cleaning off any little bits of surface rust. These panels have been sitting around in bare metal for quite some time, so just making it a little bit easier for myself to read the panel. Alrighty, so I'm really happy with the fitment of everything down this side, but one little problem I have got is the gap in between these two doors here, sort of below the body line where I've replaced the lower door skin, it's just a little bit more of a bigger gap through there. So I think what I'm gonna do there is, is I'm gonna close that up just a little bit. Up the top, it's around six mil, which is sort of what I'm aiming for on this car. It's not a show car at the end of the day, but I am trying to get the gaps as best as I can. But down the bottom half of the door skin, it's roughly around eight to nine mil. So I'm gonna close that up with a, a little bit of mild steel uh, TIG filler rod, and I'll just be making that on and uh, yeah, then grinding it to suit. So yeah, stick with me and I'll uh, run you guys through the process on that. So just tack welding that filler rod onto the front of the back door, trimming off any bits that I don't need, making sure it's all flush, tacking it about every half inch or so, making sure it doesn't move out of the way or anything while I grind it down, like I'm doing so with the flap disc. What I'm doing here is I'm marking out on my ruler the 6mm mark on it and then I'll put that up against the, the door and then I'll put a few little marks with the texture and then I will go and mark the door with the tape the whole way along and then grind it back to the tape. So that leaves me with the perfect 6mm gap. And then I'll be able to fully weld it in Taking my time not to try and overheat the panel, you always do get a little bit of distortion curling the front edge of the door in or whatever panel that you're doing. Uh, it's pretty common for this sort of stuff when you start adding stuff to the edges of the door for them to curl in. But that can all be rectified by using a slide hammer or hammer and dolly on the edge of the door to bring it back out again. So grinding all my welds down with a good 40 grit flat disc and then going a little bit closer in, making the welds a little bit more flush with the 36 grit on the roll lock. And then finally blending all the area in with the 80 grit on the DA. Here I am slide hammering the front edge of the back door, making my panel to panel fitment good between the two. All right, so I've got all that ground up. My gap is now six mil all the way through. Really happy with how that's come out. Uh, one other thing I will mention is I have done a little bit of pulling just through here. I've also re-straightened this edge because what tends to happen is when you weld something along the edge of the door or guard, whatever you're doing, uh, it tends to wanna um, sort of make the panel dive in a little bit. So I just stretched that out a little bit. Now I will have to weld the backside of that once the door is off but I'm gonna leave that for another day and I'm gonna keep working my way around the car. Uh, now the next part that I'll be doing is on this guard. I'm still sort of tossing up whether or not I do end up stripping this guard back to bare metal again. Uh, I did strip this back, deoxidize it and epoxy it uh, quite a few years ago. And obviously there's been a few areas that I've worked on it now um, that have been sitting around in bare metal and they've surface rusted, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not too sure if the stuff under here is all right. Like I said, it's been a few years. Um, you know, stuff's been spilt on this. It's been knocked, it's been bunked. It's had, you know, paint over spray and stuff on it. 
Uh, I think it might just probably be better if I just paint strip it all off, won't take too long um, in the long run. Uh, but yeah, then I think I'll start getting this nose cone fit up a little bit nicer. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get that sort of sorted on this side and then I'll start on the other side. So here I am just bolting up the nose cone to the guards. Just trying to make them fit as best as I possibly can. None of these panels really ever fit that well together, especially when they're off multiple different cars. It's just sort of something that you gotta deal with when you're playing around with this sort of old stuff. As you can see, the passenger side's a little bit more worse than the driver's side. So just cleaning up the nose cone and guard with a little bit of 80 grit on the DA. Must have been some badge holes in the front of this guard at some stage, so I give them a little bit of a clean up. Ain't had a little bit of rework as well. Tapping around the edge of the nose cone. One of the little badge holes that I welded up must have torn, so I'll give that a quick zap up with the MIG. Giving that a bit of a weld in to sort of close up that gap. Sort of match those two panels up the best I can with a little bit of MIG weld just on the edge. Linishing it down with the flap disc on the grinder. And then just opening up the two panels a little bit just with the cutoff wheel on the die grinder. A little bit more of a blend in with the roll lock. Give it a little bit more of a hammer around, just try and match those up the best as I can. And then blend all the area in with the 80 grit on the DA. What I'm gonna do now is because I'm still working my way around on this side, I've just noticed this bonnet has a bit of a dip just off this side. So, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in the film, but that's level there. But we come back up through here and you can just see a little bit of a little bit of a dive just in the edge of that panel. So I can't remember where it starts. I think it starts around around there, I reckon. And it finishes up somewhere around around there. So yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where it starts to dive and then I'll uh, and then I'll hammer that edge up and I'll try and get that as flush as I can to the profile of the guard. And uh, yeah, that should sort that one out. So I've just marked out where the low spot sort of starts on the side of the bonnet with a bit of tape. I don't like to use marker on top of epoxy so I'll use a bit of tape to sort of show me where the issue is and just bring it up that low spot with a block of wood and a hammer. Carefully, just not trying to put any dents or anything in the panel uh, as I sort of knock up that edge, because that can sort of happen like I've shown with the door where I had to use the shrinking disc. But this one sort of come around pretty easily, I, I found. It wasn't much drama. All right, so not quite sure where I left off yesterday, but I think I was playing around with the side of this bonnet right here. I ended up getting a little bit sidetracked helping the brother out, uh, folding up a lower door skin for a front door that he's repairing. Um, but anyway, like I said, I sorted out that side of the, the bonnet. Um, I got that roll sort of out of it. Pretty happy with that now. So yeah, that's all looking pretty good. Now, the thing I'm gonna focus on next is the side of this bonnet actually has a little bit of a, a raise just up through here. This one I'm actually tapping down on because it has a raise in the front edge of the bonnet. Focusing just on the edge of the skin, I didn't want to put any dents in the top of the skin. Really just sort of working that edge around and making that all nice and flush with the nose cone. Moving on with the repair on the passenger side guard. This one's a little bit similar to the driver's side guard, but a little bit more involved, especially up near the top where it meets the bonnet. But starting off with, I've got to bolt it all back together again because I've had the nose cone off. Basically what I was doing just there was I was just trying to move the edges around, trying to make the panel as flush as possible uh, before I start adding any material. Grinding just the edges of the panel just so I can expose the bare metal again getting ready for any welding repairs that I need to do to the panels. Welding up the gaps, trying to make them as flush as possible. Again, not wanting to fill in the join between the nose cone and the guards, so making sure I open up those gaps periodically as I need to with the cutting disc and then linishing it all back down with the roll lock and the grinder. A little bit of pulling needed. Had a little bit of distortion at the front of that guard just from the welding, but that's pretty common for this sort of stuff. 
didn't have that issue with the other side, but I did with this side. And then finally blending it all back in with a bit of 80 grit. Alrighty, there's been a bit of time lapsing in this video so far. Hopefully that's interesting for everyone. But anyway, on with the job. Where I've got this at now, so I've got both sides matched up. Really happy with the fitment of the guard to the nose cone either side. I just thought I'd smash this all out just in one sort of hit rather than start from the back door again and work my way forward. Um, I was happy with the initial fitment. It was just really the minor fit up, so that's why I wasn't working my way back to front. Um, so yeah, anyway, basically what I did here was is I got the guard and the nose cone fitting up best I can, um, just bolting it up. Had to do a bit of hammering through here at the front of the guard, just where it meets the nose cone, ran a little bit of weld through there, uh, linished it back, and same with through here. So all of that matches up really nice now. The gap looks really good. Um, yeah, really happy with that. One of the buddies came to play. She's looking all right for 16 years old. Anyway, on with the job. Just grinding a few little ripples out of the door skin here. This one wasn't too bad. It just had a few little ripples and it was a little bit wide just through the middle of the two doors there. So I'm gonna focus my attention just on filling in the low spots first and then I'll run one weld down the front edge of the door just to close in that gap. I always find it's a little bit easier to get the, uh, the panel sort of flush and consistent before you go and try and get the gap to the measurement that you want it to be. So just like I said, what I'm doing here is I'm just filling in those little low spots in the door gap, getting that right, and then I'll go and put one whole weld all the way down from the point where it starts to get a little bit big all the way down to the bottom and then grind that back get it where I want it to be mark it out to my uh, five or six mil gap whatever it was on this side and then finish it back to the tape much like the driver's side how I did that one Gap's not looking too bad now, it's all consistent, really happy with that. Of course, always need to do a little bit of work, just adjusting the panel to panel fitment, getting the slide hammer out, checking everything with the roller, making sure everything is nice and flush. This side wasn't too bad, so I didn't need a whole lot of work. These two doors weren't actually really that bad. The back door I did put a half skin on, and I think just where I joined the half skin, it sort of sucked in uh, just a little bit out the front, so. As you'll see a little bit later on in the time lapse, I'll actually do a little bit of pulling uh, just at the front and the rear of the door skin, so right here. Didn't need a whole lot just to sort of bring that area up. Wasn't really a whole lot of work needed there. I just didn't want to put as much filler in as probably what it would have if I didn't have pulled that up. Doing a little bit of heat shrinking with the carbon rod. Putting the tension back in that panel again, making sure that's all nice and tight so when we go and put our filler on, there's no oil canning or anything. And blending all the repair in with the 80 grit. A few little dents just at the front and the backs of the doors. That's just from getting them to fit up nice. So if we'll pull them up while we've got the damp floor out. Making a start on that tight guard to cow panel gap there. So I'm gonna clean it back with a little bit of 60 grit on the roll lock, just to sort of expose the bare metal and then clean it up with 80 grit, get rid of all those grinding marks out. Mark out the bit that I wanna chop off, just using the die grinder for that one with the one mil cutting disc on it. Didn't really take a whole lot to get that bit off.
little bit of a clean up in there with the wire wheel. Get in there with some weld through primer just on the little inner piece. I did that also on the back side of the bit that I chopped off. And then just trying to refit the bit after I've trimmed a little bit off of it, trying to get my nice gap. So it's all consistent from the bonnet to the door. Ended up having to trim a little bit off that inner piece, but that's all right. That's not a drama. Tacking it into place, making sure I get all the fitment exactly how I want it. Starting my way from one end and working to the other. A little bit of a trim, a little bit of a clean up. And just marking out a few little spots that I need to rearrange the metal on that door and the cow panel. Didn't get it quite as how I wanted it, but it's more than good enough for this car. These cars are pretty shocking through those areas, so to get one to fit as good as what I got this one to fit is a bit of a miracle, so yeah, <laughs> you get that. Um, but anyway, there's just a little bit of a look at, at just the fitment of it all tacked in and cleaned up, getting it ready to fully weld in that guard section. Wasn't really too worried about with the distortion at the top of the guard there. It's got a nice bit of shape and so it should hold itself pretty well. So just one pass over the whole lot. Didn't really have to worry about it cooling down or anything like that. A little bit of a fill in on the end because obviously I had to move it in so it got shorter. Alrighty, not quite sure what happened to the time lapse footage I had sort of uh, filming. But um, anyway, that's all finished off. It's uh, come up not too bad, I don't reckon. I ended up taking a little bit out of the door as well. Um, thankfully, it hadn't gone all the way through, so it was just a quick little sort of skim over. Um, I find you can get away with just a little bit. You go too far, and obviously, you're going to be uh, splitting the panel, but hey, I didn't get that far into it, so I'm not going to get too carried away. Um, I am pretty happy with all of that. It's a little bit tight here, but I think... The amount of time that I spend trying to fix that, it might throw out my trim fitment, which I've already re repaired these cow panels once before, and the trim's fit, so I think I'll probably just end up leaving that. I did try and manipulate this corner just a little bit, but hey, it didn't quite work out in the end, but I'm 95% happy with it, so I think for sort of just a straight car sort of build, I'm pretty confident that that's, you know, that's sort of good enough for what it needs to be. All right, so back out in the shed. I've actually uh, done a bit of work since my last bit of filming. Sort of the creative juices just haven't been flowing and I just really haven't felt like doing any filming. But anyway, trying to break myself out of that and put a hat on, get back on with the job. Uh, one, well, actually there's been a few more things that I have done since then. Um, I've tidied up this gap just through here. I noticed the top of this guard gap was actually a little bit too big for my liking. Hadn't quite matched up with the bottom. Um, there was also a little bit of a wobble in the door that I welded up just there to match up that gap with the guard. Nice. Uh, same with the top of the door here, just so I can get that gap really nice. I've also stripped off the etch primer that was on this guard because this guard just had some black etch primer on it. Um, one of the things I did notice on this side was the bottom of this guard had a bit of a curve in it. I have put a patch in that and I think that sort of just made it a little bit worse. Sometimes these guards can have a bit of a, a bow in it, like they'll kick out or they'll, uh, they'll sort of suck in in the middle. Um, so anyway, I've split that and I've just got it all tacked back together. I'm going to fully weld it um, once that guard's off the car. And I want to take this nose cone off, which is what I'm going to do now. So I can weld up the back sides. Um, so like the flanges on the guard and on the nose cone itself. So that'll... Um, there's no like uh, any tears or anything like that. So yeah, that's where I'm at now. Bit of a zap up on a few of those cracks in the panel. They just happen because when you're trying to sort of force these panels to fit each other, they sort of uh, want to split apart in those corners. Pretty common for these. If anyone's ever played with uh, HQ to WB, they normally like splitting those top ones, especially around that body line. A little bit of a grind up with the roll lock. Same on the nose cone. Make sure you don't take too much off of that sort of stuff. You want to leave a little bit on there, but not enough to sort of obscure the panel fitment. All right, bonnet's off, guard's coming off. Time to fill in that little bit, a bit of a gap. 
in the bottom of that guard there. Might not be the right way to do it, but I find it's probably one of the easier ways to fill in a larger gap. Just migging it in with a bit of three mil TIG rod as a bit of a filler, rather than trying to put a bird's nest, a MIG world in there. Doesn't leave you with a very pretty world, but it leaves you with a pretty uh, consistent blob filling the gap. I find if you were just to go and MIG weld something like that, just with your, uh, your spool of MIG wire, I think you'd find you'd probably the first time you grind it down, it would be really thin right in the middle. So if you just sort of jab that TIG rod right in the middle, just sort of bridge the gap and then MIG straight over the top of that. It sort of fills in that gap just a little bit easier. But yeah, like I said, it does not leave you with a very pretty weld at all, but it's a good thing that we're gonna be grinding them down anyway. All right, and then just linishing off the world with a flap disc. And I would have used a 40 grit on this one just to sort of knock the lumps down and then go in there with a grinding wheel. Back in again with a flap disc. I find sometimes if you use a cutting disc on a die grinder, you can get into a few little uh, areas a bit more easier and a bit more precise and it'll actually cut the weld down a bit more flat. So time to keep in your back pocket, finish it off with a roll lock, a bit of a wire wheel to clean up any uh, burnt bits and then we're back on the car. All right, so that's the guard back on after having that lower section all stitched back up again. It's only got five bolts holding the guard on, so one up the top, two down the bottom, and one down the bottom of the nose cone, and one at the top where it bolts up to the rad support. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with all of that. Looks much better now. It's actually uh, straight across that bottom edge, so yeah, pretty happy. Um, Next little job that I'm gonna do, well, hopefully it's just a little one. Um, this bolt hole up here, it's actually a little bit too far down, which is why this is all a bit um, chewed up around down there. So what I'm actually gonna do is, is I'm gonna cut, or I'm gonna say take the guard off. I'm gonna cut this, um, uh, the bolt out of the guard. And I'm just gonna move that up slightly, just so it's a little bit easier to, uh, to get that bolt on and off the car um, when, you know, comes time to fitting and refitting the guard. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. Just a little job, this one. Just basically chopped out the nut, moved it up a few mil, tack it in, trial fit it. I did find that I did actually need to move it up a few mil from the first time, so I actually had to chop it apart twice, but I got it right the second time. So yeah, anyway, after I got it all fit, welded it in, grind it all up, used a little bit of copper backing just to fill in that little gap down the bottom because I trimmed it off the, uh, off the plate that held the nut. But yeah, the repair blended in pretty nicely, I found. Didn't really need a whole lot of dressing up, so yeah, rather happy with that. Trial fitting it back on the car, I found I needed to just grind out the upper bolt hole in the body just a little bit. Didn't need a whole lot because I only needed to come up to a three mil. But yeah, my guard fitment all stayed the same, so I was really happy about that. It was a bit of a bit of a worry, but all good. I've just been having a little bit of a play around with this boot lid. What I started off with was I made sure that everything was uh, I had my front and back adjustment as good as I could possibly get it, and that allowed me to have these gaps. I think this one's about five mil all the way through. Also, um, these corners back here were a little bit curled in. Might have just been from storage or you've been transported up to the sandblaster or something. Um, probably got a little bit bent in. Same with this corner up here. What I ended up doing there was I ended up getting one of those bits of wood and I stuck it underneath inside the boot jam and just closed the boot lid on it until that raised up. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. Um, sort of effective uh, way to raise up a panel without, you know, hammering it and getting all carried away with it. Um, and yeah, basically what I'm just doing now is I'm just looking at the consistency of the gaps. Now, the driver's side on this car has slightly bigger gap than the passenger side of this car. That's not uncommon for these. So 
This side is actually really good. I'm happy with this side. That's a consistent five mil gap. But when you come over to this side, we're looking at about five mil through here. And then it's sort of, it's still five mil here, but when it gets to about this point here, it uh, it drops back down to, I think what's, what was that? That was uh, just over, oh, I'm sorry, just under four mil. And then it actually gets a little bit tighter through here again. So that's three mil just there. And then it opens up again and then closes up just down here. So hopefully I should just be able to move it over because I mean, it doesn't need to move uh, over a whole lot. Just, you know, a mil and a half. Um, I'll be happy with that. But yeah, it's um, it's not quite there, but it's, uh, it's not bad as far as they go. HQ boot lids are always a bit, how you going? Just marking out my points on the quarter panel that I need to move in and then just giving it a little bit of a tap around with a block of wood. Being careful not to hit it too hard because what can actually tend to happen is when you start moving that edge around, it will actually start rolling the quarter panel in just on that edge. So I try to avoid that and then just giving it a little bit of a clean up just with the roll lock and the DA with some 80 grit just to get rid of any flaky paint. All right, we're all done with the boot lid gaps for now. Really happy with how they've turned out. Looking pretty consistent all the way through. If anyone's ever played with HQs and even the later models, so the HJ to HZs, the, uh, the fitment, particularly from this point here to through here, has never really been all that great. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this one. I think it should body work up pretty well. Um, one other thing I will be doing to this car is I'm going to be removing the lead from the joints and I'll probably end up doing a little bit of welding through there and then I'll uh, prep it all up, get it into epoxy and then fill it with a, um, with a reinforced filler. So I'll be able to fine tune those gaps a little bit um, just like that. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's coming around. I'm really happy with it. Pretty easy task at hand on this one, just sweating the lead out with a butane torch. Make sure you wear some PPE and you're not an idiot like me. I was working in a pretty well ventilated area so I wasn't too concerned but if you're stuck indoors like in a closed in close shed or something like that, make sure you get a good mask on and wear some glasses as well because it's not very nice having lead flicked into your eyes. Believe me, I've had it happen before and yeah, it's not nice when a doctor has to go digging around in your eye trying to dig lead out. So yeah, definitely learned from my experiences on that one but Hey, that's just what happens. And on this one, found a little bit of rust just lurking behind the dog leg join there. So, chop it out, fab up a piece and weld it in. That came up pretty nice, I reckon. And it's always good to get rid of that join because they do like the tear in there when you start launching the cars. Not that we plan on racing this one, but it's always a possibility down the track. Uh, these ones right here, what I've just done is I've cleaned out all the lead. I've built up my gap with weld either side. Um, of the joint so the edges are fully weld um, and yeah basically then I just filled in the gaps because these are just stitched with a few uh, spot welds from factory fully closed that lip in because um, that's an overlapped panel and the theory behind that is is when I go to prep this up put the epoxy over it and then put my filler my reinforced filler into that nothing can get out of that joint and nothing can get back in it so there's no uh, worries about moisture coming up in between the two panels um, and coming out and you know breaking the uh, the filler out causing it to crack well that's the theory anyway I'll show you guys how they look from factory Whoop. walk into the shrinker stretcher that's how they look so not all that great um, like I said well, that's just an open join with a few um, spot welds and then they just have a few ugly sort of stitch welds but I'll go in and I'll fill all of that in with weld um, try and prep it up as best as I can uh, make this edge out of weld same with up through here I'll build that back up so it's all metal there and then basically where it will just get filler is just through these bits through here just to sort of fill in that uh, that low spot. One thing I didn't show through this part was I actually used a broken off 18 drill bit and I just sort of ground into the joins on this part just trying to get all the lead as much as possible out of that join. 
because yeah, it does sort of like to sit up under that join. And it's not very nice trying to weld two bits of metal together when they have a bit of lead in between them. So just spend a little bit of time cleaning everything up. Um, and yeah, should be pretty easy to weld up. This one didn't come out too bad. So yeah, really happy with that. All right, so we're all done with the gaps on this HQ sedan. Pretty happy with these, how these ones have come out. Certainly not top 60, but hey, for a straight car, this is uh, more than good enough. And they're not all built out of bog. They're uh, built out of metal. So yeah, really happy with that. Panel to panel fitment going down the side of the car looks really good. Got my boat gaps looking really nice. All the lead's been removed from the joints and all those joints have been welded up with the edges of the joints being filled in with MIG welds. So we're all solid welded through here on the edges of the gaps. Same with up in the roof. Also got rid of the lead seam through the dog leg to quarter panel join through there. Really happy with how that turned out. Panel to panel fitment down this side of the car looks really good. Also sorted out the cow panel gap issue that I had with this side. Nose cone to guard fitment looks very fair, I think. Also did a little bit of rework just on the front of this bonnet here. So yeah, that's that one done. Ready for the next stage.